But let me tell you, tell you all this. They're on a five-game winning streak. First four of those games were on the road. They won all four of those games. This is when noise was being made about the Houston Rockets, led by Ime Udoka, nipping at their heels. And all of a sudden, they go on a winning streak. Do you know that the Warriors are leading everybody in defensive efficiency over that period of time? And, and basically, four of, of, of the five opponents held to 100 points or fewer. We can't ignore that. Oh, by the way, the, one, the wonderful, the wondrous, the greatest shooter God ever created in Steph Curry, only averaging 20 points over this streak. What Stephen A basically said there is that if you sleep on the Golden State Warriors, they're gonna get you real bad. I mean, the dubs have been piling up wins as of late and are starting to round up into form. In case you're not tuned in, they went on a six game win streak and are playing championship basketball right now, just purely dominating on both ends of the floor. With this said, it's definitely scary hours for the NBA if the Warriors continue to play like this, and in this video, I'll explain why the Warriors are going to be the dark horse in this postseason by breaking down their performance during their recent winning streak. Anyway, so after taking back-to-back -back L's against Indy and Minnesota, everyone thought that the Warriors were done. But as soon as that narrative came up, things took a sudden turn for the dubs in a good way, and it all began in their game against Miami. As the visiting team, the Warriors were feeling out the heat in the first two quarters, throwing subtle jabs to see if the heat would fold early. I mean, JK was aggressive from the get-go, just going straight to the rack the moment he saw an opening. And he was the youngest player ever to play for the Heat at age 19. Minga attacking nicely. Then there was the chef, cooking up ridiculous shots like this. All the out of bio offensive rebound though. Mills chesting up on Steph, shot clock at two. Curry in the lane with the left hand to bank it home. But while these two were firing on all cylinders right out of the gates, it was really Clay Thompson who set the tone early, unleashing 15 points in the first half to prove that he can still get buckets when his number is called. Miami bottled up at 40% shooting. Clay Thompson, offense. five on four, Rozier's behind the play. And Clay in open three. That's the one you needed. Though the Dubs' main guns were revving up the engine, they found themselves down by halftime. However, this didn't last very long, because right after huddling in the dugout, the Dubs welcomed the Heat in the second half with their signature third quarter onslaught and eventually outscored them 32 to 20 in the third to build a sizable lead heading to the final frame. That third quarter blitz proved to be too much to handle for the Heat as the Warriors cruised through the fourth unscathed and came up with the W 113 to 92. It was Clay who did the heavy lifting by scoring 28 points, while Kuminga chipped in 18 and Wiggs added 17. What's good about this win was that Steph had a light workload and just took a back seat, scoring just 17 points. Basically, four of the guys in their starting lineup scored in double figures to grab this big win, and they used this momentum when they traveled up north to face the Magic the next day. However, before the dubs could even do anything, their momentum was cut short when Draymond decided to go back to his old habits. For what seems like the thousandth time, our beloved NBA player turned UFC fighter Draymond has managed to throw himself out of the game consistently simply because he can't keep his ego in check. And out of sheer frustration, the incident had literally left Steph crying underneath his jersey. And since the dubs were a man down, the game went down to the wire as expected. But when clutch time arrived, Steph did some Steph Curry things to save their butts and ultimately won it for them. It was another night night for Mr. Number 30 as he closed out the game, 101-93. Though Steph was the one who put the nail in the coffin, it was Andrew Wiggins who led the way as he had himself a solid night, scoring 24 points while adding 6 rebounds on 47.1% shooting from the field and 50% from downtown. After sweeping the magic under the rug, Steph returned home to Charlotte to face the Hornets on the night of March 30th. To start the game, Wiggins picked up where he left off by splashing a couple of buckets to set the tone early in the first quarter. Now, although the Warriors had a pretty good start, the Hornets flipped the script though and outscored the Warriors 28-24 in the second quarter to keep themselves within striking distance. The scoreboard said 50-45 in favor of the dubs come halftime, but as we all know, this gap would be blown out in a blink of an eye, cause just like the previous games, the Warriors 
Warriors stormed out of the locker room and buried them in the third, led by Steph's 12 points, to put away the game for good early. The hometown boy had 23 points on 9 of 18 shooting, followed by Wiggins' 20 markers, while TJD added 18 to grab another road win for the dubs. Anyway, carrying a three-game winning streak in their back pockets, the Warriors jumped on the plane and went back home to welcome Wemby and the Spurs at their doorstep. Surprisingly, the Spurs took over in the first, outscoring the Warriors 34-27 in the opening frame. But despite their efforts in keeping it close, it was the Dubs' third quarter onslaught yet again that really blew this game out of proportion. The Dubs thought they'd already put the Spurs in their place after blowing them out in the third. However, the Spurs showed some fight in them to keep themselves in the match. Eventually, the game went down to one crucial possession, and in this crazy sequence, it was Clay who stepped up to the plate and delivered the big shot to put this one to bed. The final score read 117 to 113, and once again, Steph took over and had himself a night racking up 33 points and 8 assists while shooting 52% from the field and 46.7% from 3 to lead the way for the dubs. Anyway, next up, they got the Mavericks on their hands, and as expected, Luka and company didn't make things easy for Steph and his crew, as he and Kyrie were flat out balling on this night. The Warriors kept battling though to make it a game, and by the fourth quarter, the tension was palpable as both teams slugged it out, exchanging big shot after big shot. Luckily, the dubs were able to build a comfortable cushion with a few minutes left in the game. But at the end of the day, it was this block courtesy of Draymond that really sealed this one. Despite Steph only chilling with 13 points, the Warriors managed to beat the Mavericks in a close one, 104-100, with guys like Moody, CP3, Clay, and Wiggs covering for Steph offensively to offset Luka's 30 points and Kyrie's 27. Now, after narrowly escaping the Mavericks, the Dubs traveled back to Texas, this time to battle the Rockets, a team that has been looking to bump them off the standings and grab the last spot in the play-in tournament. There was plenty at stake in this particular game, which was why Clay didn't waste time in turning up the microwave early as he unleashed 21 big points in the first half alone to show that he meant business. Clay was so hot that it spilled over to the rest of the guys, like Steph, Wiggs, and TJD. And before they knew it, the Rockets found themselves down big, and eventually they never recovered from there, as the Dubs cruised to an easy win, 133-110, to and grabbed their sixth straight victory. Anyway, there are plenty of things that we can learn from the Dubs' recent winning streak, which makes them an instant dark horse in the West, and one of them is that you can't sleep on the Warriors, especially in the third quarter. In their last seven games, which includes their recent loss to the Mavs, the Warriors have registered a point differential of 41 points in the third quarter. Time and time again, the Warriors would usually pounce on their opponents right out of the gates in the second half and if they can't survive it, it would often lead to a loss, because the dubs would just put their foot on the pedal and not let go until the end of the game. Now, apart from this, we have seen that the guys who are basically nowhere to be found all season long have been picking up the slack and playing like their old versions. I mean, Wiggins was averaging 16, 5, and 2 while shooting on 43, 37, 81 splits. And Clay has been superb as well in the last seven games, averaging 18.7 points on 47.7% shooting from the field, 36.8% from three while being perfect on the foul line. As long as these two keep their games up like this, I'm really confident that the Warriors can beat any team in the West, because Wiggs' two-way tendencies and Clay's outside sniping are really vital in going up against a tough team in a seven-game series. And lastly, the thing that really stood out for me recently was their solid defense. During the course of their six-game winning streak, the Warriors held Miami, Orlando, Charlotte, and Dallas to just 100 points and below, and during that stretch, the Warriors were also ranked fourth in the league in terms of defensive rating. This only shows that the Warriors are slowly getting back to their old championship form, and when they're locking up teams like this, the Warriors are definitely going to be a problem, especially when they're raining down threes and making buckets on the other end.